Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Oz's fish room. This evening I am doing a segment on ick. Unfortunately, I'm dealing with a case of ick which I could have prevented by holding some new fish in my quarantine tank for a longer period of time. But of course, I was a little overzealous. I held them for approximately 10 days and uh, it should have been more like three to four weeks. Um, especially taking into consideration that they're going into a tank of fish that I've had for you know, well over a year, um, year and a half, if not longer, um, including some of my, my favorite fish. And I will say that I am happy to report that my fish are doing better now after about three days of treatment. Um, and I'm gonna go over what I did here so that hopefully um, I can help somebody else. Um, first of all, I turned the lights off because it doesn't like lights. Um, second of all, I turned up the water tap from approximately 78 degrees Fahrenheit to now at about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and when turning up the temperature of the water, um, since the water uses more oxygen, when it's warmer, I, um, I stuck in uh, some air stones. Um, as you can see, I took this one air stone here and then I dropped it in just underneath this power head and it's just basically blasting oxygen into the, into the tank. Um, uh, once this is done, of course, um, I'll be removing that. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I know it's kind of hard to see that. I don't want to turn the lights on. Uh, and then I've got another air stone here that I added, and then this is the default um, air that I have here through this uh, sponge filter. I like to, I have a tendency to over filter my tanks. Um, this is only a 55 gallon tank, but I've got this uh, large um, air sponge here, and then I've got a, uh, a C4 filter. I ought to do a C4 built the one of these days. They're okay, they're not bad, but I've, I'm invested in like three or four of them, so I've got a lot of extra parts for them. And I don't want to get too far off topic, but they do a pretty good job, but I don't know. Maybe it's just a case of parts wear, because it seems like a lot of parts in these filters um, are used in some of the other filters that I'm interested in, like the AquaClear. Um, I think I like those a little bit more, but we want to get off topic. So anyway, um, that said, um, one of the things that I do that I'd like to share is um, I got this DIY um, filter slash cartridge idea from another person on YouTube's website. And this is one of my favorite uh, tools. I use it every time I do a water change. Um, as long as I'm doing water changes like this. Um, and even if I'm not, I'll probably end up using um, some of these uh, chemical um, uh, elements that I'm about to show you. Uh, not elements, but products. Um, it's just a garden hose that goes in here through some PVC um, fittings. And then that's a, um, a suction um, cut from a, a filter. And it allows me to stick this onto the side of the tank inside the tank and then just shoot uh, tap water into the tank at um, just the right temperature. Um, it's cool because I can adjust the heat and um, I don't think it entirely dechlorinates the water. In fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but um, it certainly does help. And then um, inside of these, uh, this cartridge here, I use these, um, and I'm not plugging for Google, but um, these are the products that I use. Um, here's so I basically got this ammonia remover. I've got this Clearmax and activated carbon, and those are all three in um, that filter right there. And um, I don't change it very often because it doesn't get used frequently, like a, um, a filter that's constantly in production inside of an aquarium. So let's see, in terms of treating the ick, um, I've been adding the aquarium salt 
Um, I'm also using, and I'm not, again, I'm not uh, plugging for these um, products, but this is what I'm using and it's helping. I'm using this uh, Melifix because there does seem to be some signs of uh, uh, potential bacterial infections as well as uh, Pemafix for uh, fungal infections and then of course uh, Itgard. Um, and uh, you can look up these products if you want to do um, you know, some more research. And then last but not least, I've got this uh, uh, Cordon uh, Ick Attack. And um, as you can see, it's cozily organic or 100% natural. Um, and it seems to be working fine. So um, I've pretty much been blasting my tank and doing um, like a 20% water change every day. Um, the first water change I did was like 50, maybe 60 percent. Um, and I took everything out of there and I cleaned the aquarium. I know you're not supposed to be like, overzealous and stress the fish any more than they're already stressed, but to be quite honest, I wanted to take everything out of there and just get rid of it. Anything that the ick had potentially already clung to and um, remove as much ick as possible and remove as many uh, potential hosts for the uh, ick to land on. So I think it's working out and I'm gonna probably keep doing this for at least a week. Um, and then you know, once things are starting to shape up, then um, I'll, uh, I'll probably start dialing it down a little bit and um, being less aggressive with my treatments here. All the while, paying uh, extremely close attention to the fish. Um, so I saw what I think is ick um, spots. They weren't too bad actually. Um, it looked like there was a little bit of uh, fin clamping going on with my Severum and some of my Geos in here. And um, that's pretty much the, um, the thing that set me off. And my wife, uh, also agree that um, it looked like they had the aforementioned as well. So um, that said, I just got right on it. So um, I'll let everybody know how it's going, but um, I think it's under control now, and um, hopefully somebody else can use that information. All right. Sorry for the long-winded uh, video, but I thought it was important to share this information, and um, I hope somebody else finds it useful. As always, thanks for tuning in, and until next time.